Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to find out how to find the area under curve if the area under your graph is not a nice little triangle or trapezoid or rectangle. And so here is our fundamental theorem of calculus. Actually, have, there's actually two parts to the fundamental theorem of calculus, and we're just going to do the first part today. The fundamental theorem of calculus says if you are interested in finding the area under a curve of a graph, treat it like a derivative. Treat it like it was someone had already taken the derivative and that it's an f prime. The way you're going to solve this is you're going to go find an antiderivative and then you're going to plug in your values from a to b and you're going to subtract those values. So let me show you how this works. Let's say we want to find the area under the curve of x squared plus 3. We're finding the integral. And remember, it's, this is net signed area, so anything that drops below the x-axis would count as a negative value. So we're going to do this by hand, and we are going to say that x squared plus 3 is my f prime. So what is my f of x? That means I, has, I have to integrate f prime. I have to integrate x squared plus 3. And I can find any antiderivative that I want. We don't even have to put the plus c on it. I'm going to let my plus c be 0. You could use whatever plus c you want. Since we're subtracting these off, those c values are going to cancel anyway. So here's how I would solve this. I would first of all go find an antiderivative. The antiderivative for x squared is x cubed over 3. And the antiderivative for 3 is 3x. So I have now found an antiderivative. And I'm going to put brackets around this. And I'm going to put the bottom number 1 down here and the top number 2 up here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug the 2 in. We're going to find f of b by taking the b and we plug it in for x. So we're going to take the 2 and plug it in for x. And that would be 8 thirds plus 6. And I'm going to put this in parentheses. And then we do minus. Now we're going to plug the bottom number in. If we plug in the 1, I get 1 third plus 3. And then I'm going to actually simplify this because I want to show you what we have just found. 8 thirds minus 1 third is 7 thirds. 6 minus 3 is positive 3. And I'm going to treat that 3 as a 9 thirds so that I can add these together. And I'm going to get 16 thirds. Now this is one thing, this is our first step in our journey to what does an antiderivative tell us. An antiderivative can tell you area under the curve, which is pretty neat and not really intuitive in my opinion. So the area under that curve is 16 thirds, and I want to show you a picture of that. So I've got the graph of x squared plus 3 here on my calculator, and I'm going to graph it. And it's above the x-axis, so it makes sense that I got a positive value here. And I can hit F5, and you can go all the way down until you get to the integral. There's the integral symbol, the integral of f of x. And the lower limit was the bottom number, which is a 1. I'm going to hit 1 and enter. And the upper limit was a 2, so I'll hit 2 and enter. And it shows you that that area is 5.3 repeating, which happens to be 16 thirds. And folks, that is not an estimate. That's the exact value of the area under the curve. And I think that is pretty neat. All right, let's do a couple more examples. I'm not going to simplify these, though. Um, of my final answers anyway. I want to, of course, go through the process again. My first process is to find an antiderivative. And I've got a quotient, and we know that we don't have a quotient rule necessarily for antiderivatives. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to separate this into x over x to the 1 half. We've done this a couple of times on homework. Minus 4 over x to the 1 half. And then I'm going to simplify. So this is going to equal the integral from 1 to 9 of x to the 1 half minus 4x to the negative 1 half. And then I can take my antiderivative. So I'm going to add 1 to 1 half, which is 3 halves. Dividing by 3 halves is the same thing as multiplying by 2 thirds. So I'll have 2 thirds x to the 3 halves. And then when we add 1 to negative 1 half, we get 1 half. Dividing by 1 half is the same thing as multiplying times 2. So I'm going to get minus 8x to the 1 half. And we're going to evaluate this from 1 to 9. So we're going to plug the 9 in first for my x's. And then we'll plug the 1 in and subtract those values. Now let's stop and talk for just a minute about fractional exponents. This is always power over root. The top is a power, the bottom is a root. So this is power over root. It's much easier to take the root first and then take, raise it to the power. Your numbers stay smaller. So when I'm plugging in 9 to the 3 halves power, it's not that hard. You take the square root of 9 first, which is 3, 
and then take 3 to the third power. 3 cubed is 27. So that will be 2 thirds times 27. And we also have to plug in the 9 for the x here. The square root of 9 is 3. 3 times 8 is 24. So I've plugged in the 9. Now I'm going to minus, because that's my formula, I'm going to plug in the 1. Well, the square root of 1 is 1. 1 cubed is 1. That's just 1. 1 to any power is 1, so I'm going to have 2 thirds minus 8. And I am not going to simplify this for now. I'm just trying to teach you the process. We plugged in the 1, got the square root of 1 is 1 times 8 is 8. So I'm not simplifying that, but it wouldn't be hard. 2 thirds of 27 would be at the 3 into 27, 9 times, 9 times 2 is 8. I said I wasn't going to simplify. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not going to simplify it. Off we go. All right, step one. You want to find the area under the curve, you're going to find an antiderivative. You want to find the integral anyway. Find an antiderivative. So what have we ever taken the derivative of to get secant squared? And of course that answer is tangent. And I'm going to evaluate tangent from 0 to pi over 4, which means I've got to plug in pi over 4 and then plug in 0. And so what's the tangent of pi over 4? Well, See, pi over 4 is a 45 degree angle, so I'm going to draw a 45 degree angle, and I'll label that. It's isosceles, so I'll label those both as 1's in the hypotenuse. I'll put a square root of 2 there. So here's your angle x. The tangent of the angle is opposite over adjacent, so that's just 1. And of course, the tangent of 0, 0 is out here. This is 0 degrees or 0 radians. This ordered pair would be 1 comma 0, and you should remember that tangent is sine over cosine. So the tangent of 0 would be 0 divided by 1, or just 0, and that's your answer. It's 1. All right. If you have an absolute value, you're going to need to separate this into two integrals. The first thing you want to do is you, you want to figure out where does it equal 0. Where does 2x minus 1 equal 0? And of course that happens at 1 half. So this is going to break at 1 half. To the right of 1 half, it's going to behave like what you see inside of the absolute value. So to the right of 1 half, it's just 2x minus 1. It's just this linear equation. To the left of 1 half, however, it's going to behave the opposite. So this is going to be like a piecewise function. This is going to be 2x minus 1 as long as x is greater than or equal to 1 half. But it's going to be the opposite of that if we are to the left of 1 half. It's going to actually just flip it over. That's where the v comes from. So I'm going to have to separate this into two integrals. I'm going to do the integral from 0 to 1 half of the equation negative 2x plus 1 because it's the opposite because we are to the left of 1 half and then plus the integral from 1 half up to 3 of regular old 2x minus 1 and let's go through here and do this now we're the first step is to find an antiderivative the antiderivative for negative 2x is negative x squared the antiderivative for 1 is x I'm not going to worry about a plus c this is a definite integral I don't need it we're going to go from 0 to 1 half and then for this other one this is going to be x squared minus x from 1 half up to 3 so we're going to plug them in first so we plug in our 1 half, 1 half squared of course is 1 fourth. And then we plug the 0 in. Well that's just going to be 0 plus 0. That's not really a necessary, but I'm going to write it to show you that I did plug it in. And then plus, plug in our 3, we get 9 minus 3. And then plug in our 1 half, we get 1 fourth minus 1 half. And I am not going to simplify that. You could get the exact area, but you know, not going to waste your time with that. All right, so now we're going to find, this is going to be pretty wordy, but you're going to answer questions like this tomorrow. Find the area bounded by this graph, the x-axis and the vertical lines x equals 0 and x equals 2. I have a secret for you. I cheated and I actually already graphed this here. So um, it looks something like this and it's above the x-axis the entire time from 0 out here to 2. So all I have to do is figure out what the rest of this stuff is. The x-axis is right here. The vertical line x equals 0 is right here. And then the vertical line x equals 2 is right here. So I am trying to find the area of this region right here. R for region. So of course that's going to be the integral from 0 to 2 of our function. 2x squared 
minus 3x plus 2. You're going to have to make sure that the graph does not dip below the x-axis because if it does, you're going to have to break it up into pieces. All right, my first step is to find an antiderivative, so 2x cubed over 3 minus 3x squared over 2 plus 2x. That's my antiderivative. Add one to the exponent and divide by that. We're going to put little brackets here, and we're going to go from 0 to 2. So the first step is to plug in 2. 2 cubed is 8. 8 times 2 is 16, so that's 16 thirds. 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12. Did I write? I, that does not look right there. Oh, my career options might have just gone down because I think I wrote something very crazy here. Uh, 3x squared over 2, and I was multiplying it times that 3. Silly mistake. That's actually, we're not even going to call that silly. That's a rookie mistake, Mr. G. Rookie mistake. I believe we need to go back here and try this one again, Mr. G. When we add 1 to 1, we get 2, and dividing by 2 is, yeah, that's, that's embarrassing. Okay, sad panda, whatever. So that's actually a 2. Let's make it look a little bit better than that. I don't know why my brain decided to take that 2 times that 3. Please forgive me. Back to purple. So this should be a 2. That looks better. All right, so now we plug our 2 in. 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12. 12 divided by... Maybe I was doing 12. I don't know what I was doing, but I'm just gonna, we're just going to go forward and forgive me. And then plus 2 times 2 is 4. And that's just the top number, minus, now do we need to plug in the zero? You should plug it in just to make sure, but we plug in zero, everything here is going to go to zero. So this is a lot of zeros. So there's your answer. It's 16 thirds minus 6 plus 4, whatever that works out to be. So sorry about my rookie mistake there. You can make fun of me tomorrow that, you know, whatever. Twos don't just magically turn into sixes, even if there's a three around. So I will see you guys tomorrow.